Ah, Welcome to Raw. Oh, what the fuck just happened? Like, died. Fucking go. Fuck, it bit me. Who oh, bit you? Again? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Raw <laughs> down. Yeah. Nico <laughs> is in a bunker fighting wild animals. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Are you okay? Is any of this being recorded? Yes. Did you get any yes, I got the yes. Yes, I got All it. All right. God, if I bleed again, I'm kicking this thing out. <laughs> Live on air. Live got on him. air. Listen to us as Nico dies of cat scratch fever. Live on air. I don't feel so good, guys. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm oh. going to call up Ted Nugent. He is the expert on this. Cat scratch fever. Actually, he's a piece of shit. I don't oh, want to no. call him. Speaking Hello? of pieces of shit, Vince McMahon. <laughs> We're in St. Louis, He's out dude. here. We're in St. Louis. He comes <laughs> out. He says the question we all want to know is, will Mr. McMahon go to hell? Yes. And the crowd yes. starts doing the yes chant. Vince is better than Daniel Bryan. He invented this. <laughs> Vince then begins to mutter and prattle on for, I don't know, probably 10 straight minutes uninterrupted, where he says, if I offended my son Shane, then perhaps I offended all of you in the crowd, but unfortunately for you, I will not go to hell. I was in hell earlier this morning. My cab took a wrong turn. I ended up in East St. Louis. The crowd is livid at this. Our St. Louis crowd is beyond upset. Vince asked the crowd not to confuse his lack of knowledge of church customs. I believe he's probably referring to the time he took a bath in the holy water and then did the Triple H with it. He says, don't confuse that with blasphemy. Actually, I believe in every religion because they're all basically the same thing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you all about what I've been into for 40 years. It's McMahonism. I am the master and the god of any form of sports entertainment, and anybody involved, the wrestlers, the people in the back, even the crowd, will worship him. This is a shoot promo from Vince McMahon, and now we get into fun with Photoshop. They really went wacky in 2006 with this. It's so bad. <laughs> it's, so yeah, bad. it's Again, it looks like our thumbnails that take the editor time <laughs> about 10 seconds to put together. But it's 2006, so to get the dot matrix printer to start firing, this probably took seven hours backstage. But Vince wonders what would happen if McMahonism was around when Michelangelo was around. And he shows us a painting of the creation of Adam that has Vince just standing in the middle of it where Adam and God's fingers are touching. And then Vince says his dick is bigger than Adam's. Oh, that's right. And through this whole promo, Joey Styles, who is the babyface announcer, is corpsing the whole time because Joey Styles sucks and does not know what comedy is at all. And these 06 Family Guy jokes with bad Photoshop accompanying them are his shit. Vince begins talking about Moses, you know, the the from Bible. And he wonders if Moses is his first or last name. And I think that's an ad lib line because it never goes anywhere and gets no reaction and he just moves <laughs> on forever. But then he we, he points us at the screen again and out there we see Moses holding the Ten Commandments. And right next to him is Vince doing a soy face holding his muscle and fitness magazine. I... It's epic. <laughs> it's so fast. Vince begins running down some of the commandments for some reason and he says don't covet thy neighbor's wife unless she's really hot and some of the crowd goes yeah dude and coach says amen to that <laughs> fuck coach we hate him vince now shows us a picture of him pogging in the background of the last supper and he says he'd be the life of that party the next family guy joke we get is vince giving a thumbs up next to just a statue of the Buddha. That made no not like, sense. <laughs> yeah, not like the actual guy or the drawing of him under the tree or whatever. Just like the gold statue is giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Vince then says another very strange line that goes nowhere. Uh, Whether you realize it or not, Asia is very important to the global economic system. I don't know if he was going for booze there, but he got basically no reaction. If this was in, like... You know, a Rust Belt city at the time, this sort of economic racism would go huge. But 
St. Louis, Missouri has no culture and no economy, so they don't care. We now see Vince next to John Pope John Paul II at Shea Stadium. The crowd now starts chanting, boring. They are correct. And Vince Big says, wow, no, it's not boring anyway. And then continues to prattle for five more minutes. And then just completely loses the plot and mumbles something about how this is America and we can practice our freedoms. So I guess the crowd is free to join McMahonism and they just start booing him. Vince says he knows of one person that won't convert, and his name is Shawn Michaels, but at Backlash, Shawn will fall at his knees and worship at Vince's feet. Vince asks God to strike him down multiple times if he is lying, as he did last week at the altar of the church. Unfortunately, God does not smite Vince McMahon, so Vince guarantees victory and demands the crowd praise to his glory, stealing Bobby Roode's shit. Uh... <coughs> 12 years, I think, before he showed up in NXT. <laughs> and then Shawn Michaels runs in from off screen and sh- sweet chin musics him. Starts flopping on the ground, yelling at him like a really bad version of what Stone Cold does every time he stunned Vince. Shawn's music hits. Shawn keeps dancing. No security or other wrestlers or Shane or anybody gives a fuck. Because Shawn Michaels just dances around the corpse of the chairman and owner of the company for a good amount of time. Nobody comes out. Shawn keeps dancing. He eventually (laughs) leaves the ring. We see a shot of Vince's corpse in the background. Some guy is really getting it to Shawn Michaels' music and hits the Shawn Michaels pose. That guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's been about a minute. Nobody has come out at all. And then Vince starts to stir in there. And then Sean runs back to the ring. Again, the owner of the company, who he has just physically brutalized. No security, no other wrestlers, no Shane, nobody gives a shit. He hits the suck it over the corpse and leaves again. No medical staff, no anything. It's And there's your whole segment. It was probably worse than how I ran it down. It's so cause... bizarre, man. Like, what was yeah. all that about? Like... It's so it, like Shane is not there throughout the whole episode. Like he is correct. Shane was very probably upset about what happened, and he didn't want to be there for the segment. <laughs> I don't know uh, how much like uh, of a religious person Shane is, but like he just didn't. He wasn't there. He's been there the whole time. Something happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I will say though, this was so much better than the opener from what, last week. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's like, true. Like last week, like I swear, if John Cena, Triple H, and Edge came out just to yell at each other again for 23 minutes, Raw Down would be canceled. Yeah, this show we, would be canceled. We, we need John okay? Cena to be the the guy that's leading the religious freedoms. Now, hear me out, right? John mm-hmm. Cena comes in the ring. He goes, hey, Vince, <laughs> you know, hey. you're right. I should join McMahonism. I hate God. And then he leaves the ring and he goes, but wait, <laughs> listen here. I'm actually Christian, pal, and he gives him the the fu. That that that's nah, what nah, should have happened. This time he gives him the razor edge because it's like the cross. <laughs> John Cena went to the Sermon on the Mount and then said, "Fine speech, Jack." Fine to speech. Jesus. <laughs> and then hit him with the basic thugonomics. And I think this actually could have been a good segment. I, I think. The issue, because like the Shawn Michaels kick, I mean, the crowd popped. I thought it was an excellent sell by Vince. It was good. Shawn should have just left. If he just would have left, this would have been a good segment. But I think the like pseudo stone colding and it's like, what, four minutes of just hot dogging? I, I think it hurt the segment a lot more. It just felt this is, so bizarre. This is also several two-minute backstage promos that they jam together into one thing and then put some Family Guy jokes in it. Yeah, like yeah, that's true. What was he on about? Like, I guess it was just the setup that he's bringing up McMahonism, and it wasn't twenty minutes long. But even then, I didn't hear the crowd chanting "boring" last week to <laughs> Cena and Triple H and Edge, and that was boring. That's rough, man. That's tough. Yeah, if it wasn't acknowledged yet, like, yeah, he also, while they're chanting, this is boring, Vince just goes, I assure you, this is not boring. 
It's not. And boring. then it continues for another like ten minutes in the game. This uh, is really bad. I can't believe they allowed this. I like even like if Shane had to stay home, he's like, I'm not dealing with this shit at all. Like it's not even a setup for later. He doesn't come in at the end. <laughs> he's just not here. And uh, we get more into McMahonism later on, and it's even worse than you guys could ever imagine. And I can't wait to yell about it. Oh. But backstage. Also, you know, real quick, Shawn Michaels, a man of God, a man of purity. Yeah, you know, like he loves that stuff. Why is he fucking telling Vince to suck his cock? Suck it. He's a Protestant. It doesn't matter. Okay, fair enough. All right, backstage, yeah. <laughs> Triple H is here, <laughs> as uh, he's looking at uh, Vince getting carried off, and Vince is pissed. And uh, I don't like. Where did these people come from? They did not <laughs> help him at all in the ring when no, he was getting killed. Nobody helped him. Why are refs <laughs> taking him backstage? Where is the medical stuff? Vince is screaming he doesn't need a doctor, his, but where was anybody? His son in laws like, dude, you should really lay off the God stuff, man. That's really bad, man. Uh, and uh, and Vince is like, shut up. I heard what you said last week calling me an old man. How could you say that? You know what? I got an idea for you. How about you fight John Cena and Edge in a handicap match, you piece of shit? Yeah. And Trip's like, oh, come on, man, really? Another nah. handicap match? Are you serious? Who could have seen this coming? I, I will say, at least Vince McMahon watches his own show. <laughs> Does yeah. he? That's true. That's a good yeah. point. How, how else would he have found out Triple H said that? Anyone could have just been like, dude, Triple H said you're an old man, and then he didn't but, have to watch ooh. any of the context. He, listen, man, he's got Kevin Dunn. He's got JL. Who else is on the roster? Was Bruce Pritchard there? I'm sure he probably said yeah. something. Nah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Vince was That's in church. True, he, but... he couldn't have watched the show in canon. Yeah. <laughs> I think in canon he watches the show because he likes to see how good he looks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wanted to hear uh, Shane say that he was a oiled-up old man <laughs> that produced a life-saving semen. Or life-giving semen, I bet. <laughs> Not the life-saving <laughs> semen. It, was, uh, it could have been Edge, I guess, too. Uh, Go to our Redbubble store. We're selling life-saving semen. <laughs> Jarred up. It's uh, a new fragrance we got going on. That's right. Yeah, we all, we all submit a sample to Ty. He puts all of it in a mason jar, shakes it up. Give, get a little taste of... Oh, that's a perfect specimen. And then I spritz it on me. <laughs> and I go, wow, it is that's a arousal. Wow. <laughs> it's arousal with every kiss of the bottle. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'll, I'll give a little taste. I'll give a little spritz, but t like a little kiss of the bottle? Absolutely not. <laughs> Keep that away from me. <laughs> Listeners, peek behind the curtain. This is how Raw Down Ty has survived all of the gunshot. Uh, oh, yeah, Raw Down Ty's back. Over time. Yes, we've all been spritzing him with cum. <laughs> Thank you. No. Ew. Hey. Cum. Chicago cum. Huh? Don't, don't, don't put us into the cum first. That's different. Listeners, this won't be edited, but it should have been. This is probably the worst <laughs> segment we've done. I'll look. I'll look this back on this. I'll look back on this from like um, like three months from now and laugh my ass off and say LMAO. I'm yeah. not, but... Well, then for those viewers who love it, raise your cum chalices and give oh, yourself a toe. Oh God! <laughs> oh, no. Nico, buy your special Momar to coffee <laughs> cum chalice half off right now on Redbubble.com. Yes! Nico's the OG yeah. gooner here. You can't stop him. Was Gaddafi a gooner? <laughs> was he a gooner? Absolutely, right? Gotta be. <laughs> All right. Our, our tier list, once we get that going on our YouTube in two years, we're going to find dictators, which of them were gooners and which ones weren't. Tune in. Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't have to goon this. Guess what? Yeah. There's a little something... sneak peek, Gaddafi, Mega Kuma. A little, a little sneak Kuma. peek into our meeting that I forgot to bring up, but I can bring up on the pod. Mm -hmm. I will be starting the Patreon tomorrow, oh, March whoa. 4th. But now our jokes, it, it's not a joke anymore. God damn it. <laughs> you will have to do the podcast 
that you said you were going to do. I was never a joke. 1,000 Patreon subscribers. I will shove my fist into a boiling pot of SpaghettiOs pasta. Youch. <laughs> hey, guys, it's right. Emerald. Well, I'm back. I wasn't here last episode. So, well, so 5,000 Patreons will have the you don't have to do this one night with Raw Down adult video Not coming to you. <laughs> Listen, you gooner, you calm down, pal. Nico's Listen. cat bunker is getting really weird. Nico got bit by the cat. And he's getting crazy. He's the cat fever is getting to his Nick, brain. Nico, you need a life saving cum. You got to put your hand in it. Spritz it. Spritz. Give a little kiss to the bottle. All right, we need to we need to move on. Why? <laughs> Let us cook. Yeah, why? <laughs> Just look cool. at him. <laughs> Speaking of things that make me want to come, Robert Man, Conway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Get the fuck up, Nico. We back in it. Robert Conway is here. Tell me about him. Oh, I miss this man. He comes out. He's looking That's right. mighty muscular today. You know, his hair's a little off gear, which scared me a bit. You know, Rob Conway is usually the peak of men's hygiene. But you know what? He's a little frazzled today. He's a little out of it today. He's a little everywhere today. And he goes on the mic and he's tired of the disrespect that everybody thinks they can just run over him. He's tired of it all. And I agree. What the hell are they doing for Rob Conway, this absolute star? And then all of a sudden, you hear a noise from the stage. Explosions, pyro. And... Martin, I'll let you take this part away. And Kane comes out, we are told by the commentary that when he hears the release date of his new movie in which he was an actor, See No Evil, he goes crazy. So, mm -hmm. in the universe of the Fed, we acknowledge that Kane is an actor in a movie, so we have two kinds of kayfabe going on. But is he really acting? Is this just a real... Is this a documentary... Is this what the angle will become? Is this actually a documentary? Is Kane an actor that has PTSD as he's acting on the television show? This is the single most in-depth storyline since the Shawn Michaels is God or whatever the hell we talked about four months ago angle. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, listeners, we listened to these on four month delayed. We do not remember anything we said. So that's if right. you things get brought up 20 episodes later, that's why. Anyway... Kane comes out here, and Robert Conway was not ready for this. Nobody told him. Nobody prepared him. Nobody told him this giant goon that is clearly mentally unstable is going to come out. He didn't have time to grind the tape. He didn't have time to really oil himself up. He wasn't ready for this. This is bullshit. Kane got all of his pyro. It scared Robert Conway. Robert Conway is a hero, but he's he's afraid of fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly tragic. They knew that. They decided to put him out there anyway. But so he gets in there. He hits a knee. He hits the elbow. Kane is staggering. But then Kane just starts to cheat blatantly. He's too big. He's too strong. He shouldn't be allowed to be tall. He has his crazy uh, giant dick, see no evil energy going on. This is nonsense. He's clearly on the juice. Robert Conway is 100% clean, gone off of that chicken breast and asparagus Damn. diet. Kane is on so many steroids. This is nonsense. <laughs> so many. And he hits a big boot and a choke slam on a man who had no time to prepare for this and just gets a garbage win that I don't even think should count. Really. They try. This is no. This is the worst. This is the worst thing. This on is the Rob show. Conway erasure, match. dude. Absolutely. This is disgusting. Like, seriously, I've never felt so sick watching a show before. Vince McMahon is all over this episode. Yes, it and is. And this is just the sickest, most disturbing atrocity of this whole show. Despicable. Absolutely. Gates, Gates the biggest heel right now. What a piece of garbage. Truly. He then rolls out of the ring and he goes over to Lillian. And he starts yelling at her for telling everyone about May 19th. Uh, listener, I do not believe, and she in fact yells, she didn't talk about May 19th at all, but Kane doesn't care. It's the it's the steroids, and he just read The Fountainhead, he got really excited about it. So, 
He hoists her up in chokeslam position for about 10 seconds. And then we are informed that it is, in fact, the big show as his music hits. And he very, very, very slowly, with no urgency, as Kane is holding this woman in a violent position, ambles out. Kane throws Lily in like a sack of potatoes to the floor, gets into the ring. And he's done all of this well before Mr. Show even gets in the ring. Our Big Show looks really bad in this one again. I don't know what happened to him. He's but holding he's got his pants over his uh, unitard. Yes, yes, he's got weird fucked up hair, and he's got a <laughs> unitard on, but he has track pants over it. <laughs> it is a it. If Andre the Giant was a Serb, is the look he's serving here, <laughs> and it is not good. It is not good. So, Mister Show. Comes in and says, hey, what's the big deal about May 19th? And they both just double goozle each other. But then uh, Mr. Show gets the better of it, choke slams Kane, and just walks away. And then Kane laughs on the ground. Like, the problem with the, the match itself is that, like, regardless of who he beat, Kane looks, like, incredible as, like, a big beefcake that can kill people really quick but <laughs> this is stupid as shit this is awful man like what the yeah. fuck yeah this is this is bad i mean just even letting kane get a fucking like any moves out on rob cotton way is already bad enough but like mm -hmm. I, this whole thing is just a stupid advertisement i mean and again the good guy of raw down big show Again, it, as Mata said, he's looking terrible. I know he's apparently really having some health issues at this moment, but man, he needs to do something about it. Man, it, it's he's looking rough. Do you think this is even gonna I, like I, go into the next like after the pay per view? Do you think he's even gonna even bother talking about this stuff, or even like Big Show's even gonna be a part of this brand? Because it feels like they're just both not that important to the show anymore after they lost the belt. Uh. That's a great question. Like, we're I don't know. I think, I think, I think it all depends on the way backlash goes. I guess, because I think if it backlash, if Kane wins, they'll probably do something with him at least. But if Big Show wins, and yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I'll go over a bit of the I, card I, later on what they've announced, but like it looks depressingly sad because like everything mm -hmm. feels like we should have ended this feud or the feuds that are starting don't really have enough like heat to it mm. to care. And it's very like, Oh, this paper is going to be ass after we just watched mania. <laughs> that was really good. So, Oh, painful times right. we live in. Yep. Uh, Dave violence toward women for or against your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> against May 19th is uh, terrible or something. Come on. All right, right man. Yeah. I don't know your thoughts. <sighs> complicated thoughts about violence toward women shouldn't have done that and i think this is the first time i've seen a really good close-up of kane's face that man's eyes are very sunken into his head you should see him uh, nowadays tell uh, me yeah. about, not, not tell me sure, about that not sure why uh he's freaking out about may 19th and his fucking movie but we're gonna watch it eventually on the show so I guess we'll see why. <laughs> but yeah, he shouldn't have grabbed her and thrown her like that when she did not say uh, anything he was accusing her of. It was the stupid butt-fuck announcers over there behind her. I I'm glad uh, Big Show came out and uh, reeled his boy in for a, a good couple seconds. He did. He really didn't, though. He wandered out so slow. I mean, there was I, no that, urgency no, yeah, he, to it save was, Lillian. No. Big Show isn't an urgent man. He <laughs> He's didn't over 300 pounds. Yeah, he he wandered out there very slowly to go, hey man, what's the deal with May 19th? And then they fought. Yeah. He didn't care. He no. hit him with the choke slam. It's fine. Yeah, we're... This is this seems going to come up, but honestly, a lot of this episode to me, like that, is just like... Almost like weird anime style feuds. We're just like, oh no, my boy's acting up. Let me go menace him to tell him to stop it. 
This mm -hmm. show is a series of non sequiturs. It's, it's yeah, pretty it's incredible. Much. I I'm gonna be honest. I was too busy paying attention to the redneck crowd. Uh, and, just, <laughs> and just this one lady in the back on her phone waving a red balloon. Uh, in the air as every time she appeared on screen. What's wrong with that? Weird. What makes her a redneck? I, I don't... I mean, it's Missouri. They're all rednecks. What? What? <laughs> Notable redneck country, Missouri. All right, He's right, Missouri. though. He is right. As hey, the also, resident South southerner here, hmm? I can right. say that. Well, actually, no. Let's talk about Jim Ross, who he was glad to at least see somebody confident as like, right. a backstage person. We have just seen a very sad picture of Chavo, but yes, it's very nice to see Jim Ross at any point in time here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, like, look, and nobody hates Smack Up more than I do, but, like, I will give them this. They got Michael Cole and Taz. Yeah, are you guys ready for we, the press, Chavo? Ooh. Yeah, we discussed our yeah. favorite players during the break. We did. <laughs> All right, I'm keeping that in. <laughs> Excellent. We do it. We told you, listeners. <laughs> we told you and remember repeat them to those you disagree with so jr is here oh, oh boy and why the fuck is jr here why is he not out there why do we have to deal with coach and joey styles jr what are you doing back here I, I JR is not strong enough to eat them yet you're leaving uh king to be fucking swallowed up by the shit and piss it is Joey truly, uh, truly a dark time when we are looking at Jerry Lawler as he, clearly the best person involved in He's not even this. the horniest one yeah. on the commentary. No, Fucking it, coaches. No. It's crazy, <laughs> dude. Also, also, JR was recovering from colon surgery, it seems. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's horrible. I didn't know that. That is. But at least he's uh, uh, he's back on TV at least. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. Chavo. Okay. Yeah, Chavo's here, dude. And he goes, Chavo, yeah. what are you doing here? Why are you here? What is wrong with you? Why did you quit? And Chavo's like, man, Jr. Listen here, I made a promise to my family. I made a promise to Eddie. I made a promise to these fans that watch me every week. I can't be Intercontinental Champion. I'm nothing. It's over for me. And Jared's like, dude, what are you doing? You, you think you think Eddie would be okay with you just leaving like this? Chavo's like, hey, man, listen. Whether it be in wrestling or whether it be in life, I think Eddie would be with me through every step of this way. I'm just disgusted that I can't get a win. I've been wrestling all my life. I'm just not cut out to be here. And Jared's like, come on, Chavo. It's just one loss. I don't think Eddie would approve of this. And Chavo's like, all right, JR, I don't I don't care what you think. I'm going to end my wrestling career tonight. And then they shake hands and Chavo cries into the camera. I, what are they cooking? What, fucking, yeah. shit. what are they cooking here? Hey, a pile of garbage. Look, yeah, I, yeah, you really feel bad for the guy crying about losing a match. Like, come on, dudes. Like, uh, it's so lame. So but, is this the like? Is this the end of the Chavo and like the Eddie Guerrero like sad times that we've had for the last months? Or does Chavo I, I, not I, have I, a, a redemption arc or what? I, I feel like he's going heel because he looks like such a piece of shit on this segment. <laughs> like, there's no way he's going like this is a redemption arc because like fucking like. Again, what kind of babyface fucking just cries about losing a match? Like, he could always get another match. Yeah. Now, this feels like the, oh, poor me, I'm a loser, nobody loves me, and then he's probably going to show up on SmackDown, and he's going to be like a heel or some shit. Perhaps. Like, that's my guess. I don't know. I, this doesn't get anyone except JR over, which I'm fine with. JR really tried to level with the man, and Chavo go, nah. I don't care what you guys think. And and even worse news than Chavo saying, I'm done with this business. Lillian hurt her ankle, I think. I don't think they say anything on commentary. She's just not there no more. And I have Coach, specifically written that she was traumatized. She was traumatized. 
Okay. So then coach is like, you know what, guys? I got to put on two hats tonight. And Joey Styles looks at him like, you can't do this. And coach is like, ha ha, I'm going to be the ring announcer now and the commentator. So he hops up <laughs> and he announces Sheldon Benjamin coming out because there ain't no stopping me, nah. But wait a minute. Charlie Haas is here? And Sheldon Benjamin's face, he's just like, his jaw drops. Yeah. Like, his, it just Oop. melted off his fucking... <laughs> like, his face melted off his head. It was insane. Hold on, can I ask you something? Sure. So, last week, I thought the backlash match was, like... Um, who like both of the money in the bank and the Intercontinental Championships were on the line yeah. this week? Yeah, I also they thought say that. if Shelton Benjamin wins, it's for he goes for money in the bank. If he loses, the match is for the Intercontinental title. Yep, and RVD got the which, big opponent, and they both apparently which, agreed yeah. to it. Okay, so. I guess I must have misremembered. I thought it was one of those, like, they both put up, like, the money in a day. It's a continental championship on the line. Yeah. No, it was that. This was, this is just a fever dream they concocted. You're not misremembering anything. Okay, good, yeah. good. Because the title card later says it was, again, a money in bank and a continental championship match. So, what the yeah. fuck was this? Yeah. This is just uh this is just the yeah. uh, RVD gets to pick his opponent. I don't know. Mm. They just forget. They forgot last week. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah, Charlie Haas is back and he's in the ring. He's got the nice beard. He looks completely different. I can barely recognize him. I don't know what what's up with the beard. Just like my brain can't process it. Neither can Sheldon. And Sheldon's like, "What are you doing here, man? What are you doing here?" <sighs> And then just immediately it's German suplex. And I was like, yeah, this shit's hot. And he's clotheslining and Haas is going crazy. And I thought this was going to be like a crazy squash match. And Charlie's like, did you forget about me, Sheldon? And I was like, yeah, Charlie Haas is back, baby. And then Sheldon came back. That's right. And then it went another f- six minutes. And the crowd stopped caring. And they started doing rest holds. And I was like, man, what happened? And they I'm got like, sleepy. What? Like, I don't know. I see. I think this is the definition of they had me in the first half. Yeah. Because no. you could tell that they, the, you know, they both wrestled together for years. So it was like super explosive and choreographed at the beginning. And then it just, they got real tired. I don't know who got gassed or what. Just. Yeah. This seems like a two, this was scheduled for two minutes, and then they found out right before it was going six. But they yeah, didn't need to do to that. It. <laughs> it was so good in the beginning. It was hot. The crowd was into it. They they popped for Charlie a little bit. And I was like, damn, they remember Charlie? Cool. And I was like, because these guys are former tag team champions. They were the world's greatest tag teams for the uninitiated that don't know. They're They're very close together. So it was crazy that he would be doing this to him, and it's intriguing. And then the intrigue went away when Haas had to fight back from Shelton coming back. And then RV, or like he was doing RVD shit. He was doing like the Rolling Thunder and like mocking RVD. And then it was Shelton being a fucking idiot mocking RVD instead of Haas getting the one up on him right off the bat. Like, because he was shocked. Like, you could have said Shelton didn't realize he was going to fight his old teammate and that's what made him lose. But no, it was Shelton being an idiot and mocking that made him lose. So when, I mean, obviously I think right after he's backstage with them and he's complaining and he's like, I, I got caught off guard. No, you didn't. You were wrestling a seven fucking minute match. You had time to win and you were fucking showboating. It was all your fault. What? It made no sense. What are they cooking here? They had it. Yeah. Yeah, they had to set up a match in a way that only they felt was necessary. So they did this. How to ruin someone's comeback, man. I mean, Charlie Haas doesn't look like that strong. 
And if yeah. and Sheldon looks fucking stupid. It made yep. both guys look bad. I guess you could say they made him look like Charlie Haas been. Huh? Huh? Damn. <laughs> All right. Stay on the soundboard. I'm about to say something fucking crazy. Say it. I agree with something Jonathan Coachman said. Fuck the Fed. <laughs> he said, I said the wrong one. <laughs> Uh, all right, hit me again. Fuck the Fed. <laughs> I don't all know. right. All right. He says, I miss mama. Don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, coach. my God. Yes, I do. Yes. Well, someone says, nah. Whoever he's re- referring to, because I wrote that down, that someone, one of the audi- one of the announcers does not miss mama. It's probably Joey Styles. I think Styles. that's Jerry. Jerry doesn't? What the fuck? I think so. Yeah, Jerry wasn't a fan. That's yeah, bullshit. that's bullshit. Charlie Haas kind of looks like Hangman Page's dad. It's a weird look for him. Yeah, and he looks like older Chad Gable. It's a very strange look. Gabe Chadley. <laughs> Can we get Gabe Chadley to subscribe to our Patreon, please? Ty, you did miss something very important before this segment, though. Oh, my. Which what was happened? the Subway Slam of the Week. Oh no! I'm the sorry. Subway Slam of the week was Rob Van Dam doing 17 moves in the Money <laughs> in the Bank match, and then winning the briefcase. I don't know which one was the actual Slam of the week. It was multiple slams for all the 17 signature subs at Subway. Come get some right now. That's true. Including Emerald, meatball. Your, Emerald, your review of eating two feet of Subway sandwiches in about a I don't know half an hour. Ah. <sighs> Tummy full, big sleepy. Tummy full, big I have, sleepy. I have never been more concerned that one of my friends was dead uh, <laughs> until the time Emerald did that and then slept on my basement floor for like three hours. <laughs> I had to keep looking to make sure he was breathing. <laughs> because ladies and gentlemen, if you look at me when I'm unconscious, you cannot tell if I'm breathing or not. I... It's true. <laughs> he becomes a cryptid. <laughs> You know what's encrypted? The crowd, as Maria comes out during the commercial break and goes, it's kiss cam time. Nico, tell me about that. Oh, it's pretty wonderful. She comes out, they got the little hot things, and you got a couple of interesting ones. You know, you get like a couple of regular couples. And then, uh, well, today I learned what Maria's kink is because uh, she gets two... Men, one with a beard, one with a mustache, basically telling them to kiss. He's like, I want to see the beards touch, which one of them doesn't have a beard, so that was kind of weird. I think one thought about going for it, but the other was just like, nah, no way, man. And then they cut to another one with uh, these two women who I am sure, because this is Missouri, the guy who went in front and blocked the kiss from the kiss cam, probably got his shit kicked in. This is 2006 Missouri. There is no way that on a raw show, there's no way that guy did not get his shit kicked in for that bullshit move. I think it's bullshit. But you could cut backstage and see John Cena mm-hmm. and Triple H on the same, and they said, kiss. That's what I would have done if I was Kevin Dunn at that time. No, Did no, you... no, no, no. That's that's a pay per view moment. You don't throw that on the oh, free right. show. Well, this was this was during the commercial break. This was supposed still, to be you... on the main show. Still, that kiss moment, like we got to save the John Cena Triple H kiss for like you know the big show. Oh, okay. You missed that uh-huh. there were two people dressed as cows that were kissing. Yeah, the first. <laughs> I did. One. I guess yeah. I did miss that. Yeah. There's not much to it. They're just dressed as cows. Why that happens is never addressed. Missouri. I don't it's know. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> so, if we have WWE.com Unlimited, and I pay money for that, why are they showing it on TV? But we can never find Carlito getting fucking killed by Shaq. Mm. It's bullshit, man. Say. What a sad world we live in. Yes. We're backstage. Armando walks into Vince McMahon's office and he goes, Hey, 
Cabron, I am Armando <laughs> Alejandro Estrada. And Vince is like, oh, okay. And Estrada's like, listen, I have converted to Como City Say McManism. And you know what? In honor of your new religion, I want to bring you a donation. I want you to have my guy Umaga versus Shawn Michaels. And Vince's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you want, yeah, I want that. Estrada's like, yeah, you want to know what my name is again? And Vince goes, yeah, what's your name again? Let me hear that. And he goes, my name is Armando Alejandro Estrada. And now they're now they're now they're homies. They're good guys. They're hanging out. They're oh, smoking hold on beaches backstage. What? What's wrong? You messed it up. Because at first, when he pronounced this, Vince McMahon was a little skeptical. He was like, "Why would I do that? Oh, Why yeah. would I set this match? Who are you?" Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. Yeah. He's like, "Who's Omaga? I don't know who this guy is." Even though, again, see, he doesn't watch the product. Someone just told him yeah. he was an old man. Or That's, his yeah. said it. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, he's a killer. Look at him. He's cool. And Vince is like, yeah, sure. I like Samoan people. And that's what Vince says. He loves Samoan people. So he's like, I'll, I'll, I'm cool with that. And then and then Sheldon comes in, and he's mad. He's like, Mr. McMahon, that was bullshit, man. Look at this. I can't defend this at Backlash. I need you to help me out. And then he gets down on his knees. And Vince is like, what, what do you want me to do? He goes, you know what? I I believe in your religion now, Mr. McMahon. I believe in you. Is there anything you can do to help me out? And then <laughs> he looks up at him, and Vince is looking down at him. And I don't, I don't like this, man. This is this is uncomfortable, man. I don't... Listen, <laughs> come on. Cringe. You can't, you can't give me the fucking Dutch angle looking up at that. <laughs> and Vince like, yeah, you know, I could, I could do something for you. After all, I do like people on their knees before me. Okay. So, Chuck really? Benjamin's totally sucked his dick, right? Yeah, no, there's no way he didn't. Because they didn't, I mean, it- they didn't mention this the whole show. <laughs> they didn't say, I fucked around and got RVD fucked over. They just kind of did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no response. True. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I, like, I think out of kayfabe. I mean, uh, God, I'm just saying, man. I think this man got this. Also, he did this for Shelton Benjamin, but nothing for Rob Conway. Fuck yeah, Vince what McMahon. the fuck, dude? I know Rob Conway's a big McMahon guy. Mm-hmm. This is bullshit, exactly. dude. No, no, yeah, I don't know the lore on Rob Conway. I'm gonna be honest. What do you mean? Yeah, no, no. Rob Rob Conway doesn't need to come beg for this sort of thing. Vince freely. Vince Vince is the one on the knees for You're Robert right. Conway. Just this look at him. Yeah. Also, yeah. Stop. as this, uh, you know, we'll call it sexual harassment. It's got to. Be. Yeah, at minimum, he is doing a sad Potter's face. So, that's good. I, I just Fuck can't this. believe it's it's disgusting, dude. Like I can't believe they're insinuating that. Like, come on, man. <sighs> yeah, again, hey. it, it it just goes to show, man. Yeah, Vince is an equal opportunity, horrific uh, race rapist. Yeah, yeah, man, it sounds like it. Yeah, we cut. We're now back in the ring, and there he is. Umaga's here. ECMO, number one fan, Dave, wants to talk about That's this That's right. One. Umaga comes out. Shawn Michaels is out there. Because this whole thing is set up for Umaga to kill Shawn Michaels for Vince McMahon. To make him fear McMahon. Is. And as a test of their friendship, or I guess their new alliance, this, this has all been set up. While the match is beginning, Vince McMahon comes down to the ringside after Umaga has started to beat on Shawn Michaels and watch and really just get off on the fact that uh, Shawn Michaels is now being destroyed by Umaga and as this continues uh, Estrada is interfering and the ref goes to DQ them but Umaga does not care he does not play by these rules 
Also, he pushes the ref and the ref doesn't instantly die. This might be the first time in a long time that a ref didn't instantly die. I just want to point that out. Do we know who the ref was? Like any one of the other freaks that would know? Because I, I don't remember who the ref was. I don't remember I, what they uh, look like. I don't, but we have to get him on speed dial. <laughs> Call him up. <laughs> Is it the same ref for each match in the episode? No. No. They have several. Okay, because I know later the one ref just takes a shit. Yeah. But if, if you're a real fan, you do know their names. And correct. by real fan, I mean just the worst kind of degenerate. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's up? It's me again. <laughs> shout out to so, Mike Yoda, am I right? Shout out to Charles Robinson, Lil Nate. Yeah, Lil Nate. So the bell is rung. The refs are, or everyone's screaming, it's been DQ'd. Umaga does not care. He keeps just pinning Shawn Michaels in the corner, just beating him up, drags him to the middle of the ring, and holds out the thumb that he uses to murder people. The Samoan spike. That's right. And he jams it deep into Shawn Michaels' neck and lets him fall dead. And uh, while he's about to coup de gras him officially, Vince McMahon steps in and tells him that he, they did what he wanted him to do, get the hell out of his ring. Vince is going to finish him off himself. Uh, Vince ties Sean to the ropes and goes and gets a steel chair. And when he comes in to finish him off, uh, some pyro explosion goes off. It stuns Vince McMahon. So then he tries to do it again. And more pyro goes off. A sign from God? Vince was also Looney Tuning the whole time. He was fucking <laughs> he flopping was... around like a, a fish. He was like, oh, wow. Whoa. Rolling around on the ground. Well, see, that doesn't... Uh, the peak is Vince McMahon now retreats out of fear from the stage. And the ramp explodes in fire. Knock him to the ground where he then rides on the floor for several minutes. Just surrounded by fire as he skitters away. And we see Sean just staring into the fire. It's... <laughs> he didn't even stand up. He just rolled away and, like, out of yeah. focus. Yep, like a fucking armadillo. Yeah, uh, listeners, uh, sorry I can't paint, like, the picture you need. This was just such a bizarre spectacle of a match where after all of this circumstance of if there's a give me a sign, strike me down, there's just a bunch of wacky pyro things happen to scare away Vince. In yeah. in context of like being a wrestling fan and being a stupid smark, and I go, <laughs> I look at Umaga and I go, damn, they've been pushing this guy like crazy. And wow, they, he got a really high profile match with Shawn Michaels. And then it ends in Vince f rolling on the floor, flopping around to God killing him. Yeah, and I go, yeah. God damn! <laughs> this this is all happening as Sean is strung up in yeah. the rope, <laughs> Sean, much as yeah. like Jesus was on the cross. Sean keeps just looking up at him, oh. like he doesn't even look happy. He's just like melting in the ring. He's like, mm hmm, yeah. That's... I didn't even think about that. Sean was being crucified while this was happening. You're absolutely right. <sighs> Why was Sean? I don't even know if Sean was okay with it, but. Oh, that's so bad, man. Truly a weird, a weird has match. There, has there ever been, like, up to this point, like, a religious angle that's so on the nose? There, wrestling with regret has a top eight worst religious angles, and it might be literally every religious angle that's happened in wrestling. Okay. Cause, like, I'm pretty sure this was number one. Yeah, because I can't think of, like, another time this happened. Maybe I just need to do more research on it. But like, golly. This All right, you don't have to retrospect this in seven years. Once we hit two Patreons, we'll talk about the Sinister Minister's career. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Who? The Sinister Minister, dude. Yeah, man. Is that like the Demon Deacon? <laughs> sort of. He's hey. Abyss's dad. Come on, you love ECMO. You love TNA. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're right. I'm At seven board. patrons, we'll review Vince Russo's weird Christian wrestling fed. <laughs> oh, shit. That's <laughs> right. Oh, no. We're going to stay far away from that. <laughs> Unless you get those patrons in. 
Yeah, yeah. wrestling with the scripture. Oh, no. You don't have to believe this. You don't. No, stop. That's. <laughs> you don't have to worship <laughs> this. Is that is that how we're gonna do this? Yeah. <laughs> well, we gotta keep you the don't branding. To, you don't have to preach this. You don't have to preach this. That's, That's good. good. That's, That's it. Good. I think. All right. You don't have to preach this at six hundred and sixty-six patrons. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Ooh. Or if you donate six sixty six a month, Vince Vince got the fuck out of there. Also, he got in his car and left. Yeah, that limo peeled off. Look, he... if I was trying to kill an old man that was in the robes, and then a wacky firecracker went off on a chair several times, and the stage lit on fire, I would also leave. I think it's funny that he attempted three times, because the first time he wasn't scared. He was just like. Who the oh, heck that was did weird. that? And then the second time, you've like, never, what? you've never picked up a folding chair and got static electricity so hard it just kind of exploded a bit. I, I will say, uh, hold on, let's, the, we gotta, we gotta, oh, we gotta, yeah. we gotta get a Martin's take on uh, when that happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you yeah. explode to a chair? Yeah, has that ever happened to you? Uh, no. Oh. Oh man, you guys. You you guys don't live in a big sock? No, dude. I live in Chicago, big time. I live in a hole. Emerald, why are you in a hole? That's where I live. I live in the big hole. Emerald, get out of the hole. Nah. Emerald, I'm gonna. I, I got I, the arms down. I'm reaching out to you. You gotta come up. Come join the hole. Hey, he's back. <laughs> I got him out. I got him out. They were gonna say. Oh, that just to the keen-eyed viewer, that the the pyro and everything went off as Vince lifted the chair so that it wouldn't directly hit him in the face, because it does just actually explode one inch from his head. Yeah, it's set up on the corners. Cool. It's set up on the steps is where it's set up. So he goes to every corner of the ring. Yeah, and then he puts the chair over his face and then it explodes and he goes, "Oh man, ah uh, beans." Not yeah, again. G Willikers. We're about to get taught more than just religion this episode because we got Matt Stryker. Is this his debut? Because he was mentioned in like February with that GQ I, article. I feel like we saw either some kind of WWE Unlimited or something segment where he was either mentioned or talked for about 10 seconds. Yeah. He's come up before. I don't remember how. But this is his first like promo. I think he had an article in GQ and they talked about him being a teacher going into wrestling. Which is yeah, just bizarre like that they would even care enough for that. Like I'm sure yeah, people he, had jobs before they were wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, he was actually a teacher. I think he got fired for wrestling on yes. weekends and then that just got picked up and the Fed hired him for whatever publicity or whatever. Uh Real quick, Matt Stryker take El Bozo Hangman better wrestling teacher. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this like shitty ass setup with like a chalkboard. I don't know who draws Stryker's name like that, but you should get a new job. You got the got the table there. You got the apple. You got the book. I mean the desk. The what? The desk. He's a teachers have a desk on a table. Oh my bad. <laughs> uh, I need but a different know, it's perspective. 20 yeah, it's 2014. Don't you know how school works? No, nah, dude. <laughs> dude, come on. You think I know <laughs> school is? Come on. Nico, have you recovered from getting your hand bitten off, or is this my segment? <laughs> Keep that silence in. It's mine, baby. Keep this all in. All right. <laughs> all right, Matt Stryker is here with the Argyle sweater and the chalkboard and the desk. Remember... For a few minutes from now, he's got an apple on his desk. Teachers love apples. Oh, real quick before so, we go in, they showed us. Yes, uh, that's right. We fucked up again. The Stone Cold and the Rock bit that went on way too long for like a uh, this week in wrestling. <laughs> yes, it's so stupid. Remember the time the Raj threw the bench into the Ridger in Detroit? Yeah. Uh, good old Dino River. Yeah. And then Stone Cold had a monster truck, and he crushed Raji's car. 
Also, it's a forty thousand dollar car. It looks like shit. It looks like <laughs> the terrible cars that nobody wants in GTA from like nineteen seventy. This was the peak of car design in nineteen ninety nine, or whatever. <laughs> How much must have been a Ford? Nowadays? Anyway, so with that in mind, Matt Stryker remembers that this segment is just there. It says Stone Cold and The Rock symbolize what's wrong with America, because when I was a teacher. My students could tell me what happened on Raw, but they couldn't tell me about the Bill of Rights. <laughs> what the heck, dude? That was definitely me. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, yeah. Listen, I also can't name all of the Bill of Rights. I get, I, you know, I get the gist of it. Whatever, you know, it's fine. I give it a five out of ten, to be honest. Anyway. Matt Stryker can't imagine how... And that was in New York City. So Matt Stryker can't imagine what it's like in a place where illiteracy and dropouts are high. A place like St. Louis, Missouri. Oh. The epicenter for ignorance, because they're more concerned with being cool than smart. St. Louis thinks Nelly is more important than Richard Nixon. Can you what believe a, that? What a pull. Was Nelly big in 06? I think Nelly's the one person from St. Louis that anybody knows. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Very fair. So, Matt Stryker says if the crowd disagrees with him, then he's going to give him an F. <gasps> an F, folks. This no, crowd please. is devastated. But Carlito's music hits, and he comes out looking confused like Carlito always does. He does not have the apple. We cut to somebody using a disposable camera because it's 2006. Shit was crazy. I felt like I was having a stroke because, as it turns out, time passes. So Carlito comes out and he says, hey, man, you stole my apple. That's mine. Son there is... of a bitch, I've been muted. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For 30 minutes. The cat got him. Hit the mute button. All right. All right, Nico. <laughs> You're in it now. <laughs> Fucking son of a bitch. I was screaming over you. <laughs> hey. You're so mad. Hey. I know what the uh, Bill of Rights is. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Which I do. I do. <laughs> name, name them all. Name them all right now. Okay. Speed run. Fuck me. Freedom of speech. Right to bear arms. No quartering of soldiers. Uh... I think the right to a fair trial is for something like that. Five is your Miranda right stuff. Like, they can't force you to say anything you don't want to. And the rest is a bunch of court stuff I don't care about. All right, favorite um, amendment. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a tie between one to two. I do like the 25th amendment, though. Explain. The 22nd one. 25th Amendment's basically if the president is ill or out, out of action, the vice president takes over. Yeah, but mine is the right to bear these arms, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, oh, go second yeah. Amendment. Yes, Ooh. Amendment. Oh, yeah, yeah brother. <laughs> Editor Ty posted Robert Conway. <laughs> Just me. look at me. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that your Robert Conway <laughs> That's LA all I know. crossover? That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Just All right. look at me. Yeah. All right, Nico, tell us what happens about Carlito fighting Matt Stryker for apparently the only apple that exists backstage at Monday Night Raw. How could he do that? You got it. So Carlito comes out, and I, I would like to preface here too. Matt Stryker's outfit, spectacular. The all guy <laughs> sweater with the green pants, the green slacks. What a great look. 10 out of 10 stuff. I've probably worn something similar multiple times. In fact, I know I have. But Paulito comes out, and he is dressing inappropriately for a classroom, right? He's got that wide-open red shirt and the white pants, and he goes up to Stryker, and he's like, I was looking for my apple, and you seem to have taken it. And he's like, Matt Stryker's like, put that produce down. And he's like, well, you see, I was one of those kids who thought it was better to be cool than smart. Correct? And he goes on about the story about how a teacher got in his face 
and basically told him, you know, he's no good at stuff. So he took his apple and spit it in his face. What a freaking evil bastard. And of course, he tried to lie at first, but he was like, nah, I got expelled. And then he said, hey, that guy looks a lot like you. And you know what? I would love to really relive that story. And then fucking Matt Stryko gets into, like, the fucking mode. He's like, I'm warning you, Carlito. Put that piece of produce down right now. He got the teacher voice going. He he stopped doing a promo. He's in teacher mode. And freaking. And he's like, let me give you an analogy. <clears throat> and and Carlito. <laughs> yeah, Carlito's so stupid. He thought it was anal one. What a jobber. I think. He said analogy. He didn't even like say it with anal, and then he's like, "Anal what? M- no, what? what? Hmm? It's like yeah, I didn't even hear no. anal. Yeah, he just heard anal, and he's like, anal what? It, it was dumb. It was legit, like a reading from the script because it says anal. If you've looked at oh, the yeah. page and said, hold anal. on, huh? hold on, I have an epic joke. I have an epic joke. Sure. Ooh, Stone Cold. On Valentine's Day, be like, <laughs> anal what? What? God damn it. What? 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 So, yeah. What? <laughs> Fucking. So, the analogy is, it's like, Carlito is to Apple, like, Matt Stryker is to beating you up. What? <laughs> what? Then, again, this is the best segment of the show, by the way. Why well, is Carlito, Carlito over? <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, which I had 20 things to say about. So Carlito does what he does. He spits in the face to those he does not think is cool. Matt Stryker punches him. And then they punch each other. But Carlito gets him on the ground for the ground pain. And then who comes out of there, out of nowhere? It's main event Marty's number one guy, Chris Masters with the master lock. <laughs> Chris Masters Become, respects education. He does. And... He fucking gets him in this lock. He drops his ass and he walks off. And my question in this whole segment, because right now, first half, 10 out of 10, best segment in forever. Second half, what the fuck is this? What do you mean? Okay. Last time I checked, Carlito was the one who portrayed Quick Smashes. Carlito was like more the heel. And then he comes out this week, and he's like a total baby face. I yes, I thought the same thing. I was well, so confused. Well, here's the thing that you uh, missed out on. Uh, Chris mm-hmm. Masters said, "I'm the one who screwed you over last week," even though we yelled yeah. about it and said that doesn't make any sense because he didn't actually do that. So now he's the heel. Mm-hmm. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Mm. So now he's the bad well, guy. Wait, that, I that, see. So that was supposed to be the heel turn? Yes, he was like, I was the one who was screwing you the whole time when we were a team. Well, how can uh, you tell? He only I has know. one tone of voice ever. Yeah, yeah Listen, I thought he was just be the dumb baby face. Like, no, actually, I was screwing you. No. No, I think they were trying to say that he was the one that was plotting their betrayal the whole time. While Carlito was not doing it, even though Carlito kept fucking him over every fucking the real, he got. The I real heel turn here is that this writing staff thinks school is not in fact cool and disrespects educators. Yeah. That's why Chris and Masters, all... with a master's in fitness, gave him a master yeah. lock and said, fuck you, Carlito. Don't you disrespect must... my school. Yeah. Stuff like this is the reason why the education system is so shit. I just wanted to say. <laughs> so... Fuck you for disrespecting the education system. You assholes. I have Zero. Zero. WWE has left more children behind than George W. Bush did. 2006 jokes, everybody. I am, I am in uh, Chris Masters' Damn. Wikipedia article right now, and I'm in his personal life tab, and there's no nothing else to further this statement other than Masters claims that the biggest misconception that most people have about him is that he's just a bodybuilder. There's nothing else to that statement. Like, what else does he do? That that's all they say, and then they. He's also a wrestler. Who? All right. Anyway. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That's all they say. I just thought it was funny. It's just like, yeah, no, it's not. A, you didn't write it, probably. Well, maybe you did. Yeah, I, I edited it. 
Do you have a basement full of printouts about Chris Masters that you've highlighted, or is that just Benoit? It was just Benoit, and that's at my parents' place. That's okay. <laughs> that's, okay. that's all in the vault. <laughs> okay, do you keep the Bowflex ads in there, too? You yeah. still hanging on to those? Yeah. Hanging on to the Bowflex? Yeah. I think yeah. I had... I... My parents had a Bowflex around that time, too. Funny Uh-oh. enough. Hey, Tech. Uh-oh. Can I tell Raw Down story? I put it there. No! No? Got it. No, no, not you. Let's <laughs> talk today. He put it there, and he's going to kill That's me right. in the next episode. That's right. Nico, what were you going to say? I was going to say a Raw Down story. I won't name the individual, but you and I know him. Sure. There's this one guy who, because you mentioned Chris Benoit, we know this guy <laughs> who his prized possession <laughs> is the tape of the Chris Benoit <laughs> Memorial Show, which clean. we will, in fact, cover. I don't care if Smack Up stole it. I... We're covering I mean, I have a more personal story on that to piggyback off that. We go over to that oh, guy's actually... house, and me and uh, one of our other friends go over there, and I don't know why I was over there. I guess they were watching Game of Thrones. I don't watch Game of Thrones. And then after they were done with that, he goes, guys, I got something. And I go, what do you What do you got? He goes, I got the tape. And then he throws it in, and it's fucking Chris Benoit tribute show. <laughs> and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Why do you have this? He's like, oh, I, you know, I just, yeah, I'm a big fan. I had to get it. And I'm like, this is so <laughs> that he has the full episode. We'll have to get in contact with him because whenever we did yeah, the vaulted and, episode, it was like half the show. And I will say, this is the same man who went to theaters and saw Pitch Perfect, Perfect Three seven times. Well, yeah. And when I asked him about it, he was like. I think they're all cute. Oh. <laughs> if I you're mean, listening to this. I mean, also. Ah, sorry. I love that. He was. I invited, him over, I invited him over to one of my birthday parties. And I was like, hey, you coming? And it was like 8 o'clock. I was um, yeah, is there any women there? And I was like, yeah, like a few. And he goes, um, I already, I'm already in my pajamas. So I'm going to have to call it a night. <laughs> I'm like, okay, dude. Thank you. <laughs> that man's name, John Cena. Yeah, he doesn't want yes. to sex. Fuck, why did we dox him? Cut that out, cut that hey, out. Cut that out, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out. God, fuck. God damn it. Dude, John he's got Cena's, real lawyers. John Cena's house rule number five. They watch the Chris Ben Watch reviewed episode every night. One of a time! Fuck. Guys. Man. Rob Van Dam is here. Oh, what, a, what a transition. What a segue. <laughs> Best of the right. business, folks. That's what Mr. it's all about. Money in the Bank is here. Speaking of head trauma. Where's Emerald been? Is he, is he out of the hole yet? I'm still climbing out. Yeah, it's look, hard dude. to do with horse hands. It's Battle Creek Rob. Battle Creek Rob Van Dam, Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah, What's man. he doing here? Do you like is his little showing off? Do you like his little spray painted uh, briefcase now? Oh, he spray painted it. Yeah, look at it. Yeah. It's, it says Mr. Money in the Bank, and it's like blue and green. It's not. It's not dull like Edge's Money in the Bank that he cashed in earlier this year. <sighs> not fine. super dull. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah. uh, what's he? What's he doing out here? Oh, he's he's just doing a little match, showing off uh his Money in the Bank. Uh, oh, who's showing up? It's, Kenny! Uh... Johnny! Mitch! Nikki! Mikey! And we are the Spirit Squad. And Benny. Fuck off. We're not <laughs> doing the Benny bit. Stop trying to make that bit a thing. I refuse. I refuse. About Benny. To Emerald's be a Benny. Part of this. He's the Spirit Squad member Benny. number six. Come on, How man. dare you? You're the tag team champion. How dare you? <laughs> Look, if he's such a tag team champ, I mean, you're a tag team champ. I mean, oh, he's my boss. Right. What am I so, supposed to believe? Listen, they show up. It's a 5v1 <laughs> handicap before match you for dive some into reason. That. Before you dive into that, so they explain oh. it on commentary a little bit. Uh, oh. For Nico's point earlier, when Nico said, why are they doing if Sheldon loses... It's 
for the IC belt and if Rob, or whatever, if, you know, it's whatever you said earlier. They actually explained that and they said if Rob loses this match because of Sheldon's conversion, both will be back on the line in a winner take all. Oh, I missed that because I don't listen to yeah. the comments. So, <laughs> yeah. So, because Sheldon uh, did his business in the back with the. Uh, that's. That's the interference by the almighty Vince himself. Ah, I cannot believe I just fucking said that. I'm going to wash my mouth out with soap. No, you're, you're, uh, you're on the spirit squad. It's okay. Hang on. <laughs> ah! <laughs> There's the soap. Listen, listen, I know you're trying to kill yourself, but you're pointing the gun at me again. <laughs> Always. Hey, come All on. right. So, well, he just got to... enough cum sprints to get brought back. You're going to make Editor Ty do it again. You don't want Editor Ty. He's angry. What was that? Oh, yeah. Getting more. Oh, a live goon <laughs> sesh on Raw <Rod>, no. <laughs> Anyway. We're gooning? Anyway. <laughs> no, no. Rob Van Dam has to beat all five Spirit Squad members in order to keep uh, his money in the bank for the next main event, which is remind me again what the name is. Oh, yeah, backlash. Whoa, whoa, whoa. raw uh, down. And so, in a matter of thirty seconds, because it's five guys against one equal sized man, he is uh, eviscerated by these shit eaters. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, uh, in Backlash, when Rob Van Dam and uh, Shelton Benjamin, I actually remembered his name this time, uh, go against each other, it is all or nothing. Both Money in the Bank and Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, I'm surprised. So, you thought it went 30 seconds? Somehow it went a minute 20. I don't know how Jesus. it went that long. Yeah, I don't know how he lasted that, that long. That was a slow fucking also, blink for I th- me, I guess. I think this is Mitch's first match. Because Mitch oh. is never included in the the yeah. four-on-one handicap match. This one was a five-on-one handicap match. <laughs> wow. True. Mitch, dude. Mitch you was, got... Mitch was done promoted. being there. Everybody clap for Mitch. Yeah, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch. We love you, Mitch. I clap with my hands still hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Stop gooning, dude. <laughs> we gotta go listen you didn't even get to the Trish segment yet and you're already good but uh well, yeah, very yeah I fast. hit climax at some point Rob Van Dam kick, got his ass kicked what else What else is there to say yep now uh, both are on the line at backlash yep the rednecks enjoyed it so I enjoyed it I guess I mean, they're dominant for what they are. I mean, like, it's kind of weird that this group that was made to be, like, a punchline joke are getting dubs. They're the champs. They're Vince's guys, and they're constantly destroying the roster, but they're the joke. Yeah. I, what are they cooking? <laughs> this is the they, opposite. If you had these five people that you wanted to push, you put them in the joke angle, and then you make them the star, but not really. Well, yeah, they're the five fucking apostles of Vince uh, <laughs> Manism or whatever the fuck. Tell me about the five apostles. What do they represent? Uh, kissing ass and sucking dick. No, no, ass. individually. Which one is Nikki? Individually. Uh, Nikki is ass kissing. Yeah, I'm here to show the world. Come on! Come on! <laughs> Bring that ass! <laughs> <laughs> Which one's Kenny? <laughs> uh, licking boot. Ooh. Yeah, he did that when John Cena stole his woman. <laughs> and then uh, what about uh, Mitch? Sucking dick. No, Mitch. No, Mitch. <laughs> Maybe he likes it. That's okay if he likes it. But, Mitch, you can't do that. <laughs> On TV every week. Oh. He learned from Shelton. All right, what about Mikey? <laughs> Uh, Mikey? <sighs> Picking up shit. Okay, and then last but not least, Johnny. Johnny? He's the coffee guy. He gets the coffee. Yeah, you know what? Good job, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, good job. Shout out to Johnny, dude. 
I he comes Johnny comes in with a coffee and he goes, Hey Vince, and then you just see the four apostles doing what they're doing to <laughs> <laughs> Johnny <He> goes, comes? <laughs> no, Johnny don't come. He just gives him coffee. <laughs> Johnny don't come is my favorite mission in Modern Warfare Three. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is. We're in the back. How long? Huh? How long has this episode been recording for? We have three more segments. It's about as long as no. the smack up last time. This no, I think it's two. It's called Gooning Sesh, right? It just has to be. This ain't the longest episode. It's about an hour 17 right now. I think Kiss from a Bottle. We did have a cut. We did have a cut, though, because I had to say goodbye to my wife. So. My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. Who is going to be super excited for the pay per view? Uh, not a chance. <laughs> no. All uh, right. No way. It, you know what is exciting? And speaking of women, they're here. Nico, you love women. I do. I do, in fact, love women. Maria is interviewing Mickey James. Or is it Trish Stratus? Well, Maria's pretty confused. So, Mickey James, a.k.a. Trish Stratus, basically is telling uh, Maria about a wonderful gift that she got for uh, Mickey and uh, oh, like Trish, and she's so excited to show it off that she basically runs off to the stage. So, I liked how when Trish Stratus's Mickey came out, they just used her entire Mickey James theme, right? It's like, I don't know, I think that that's what I should touch show. Like, she's more in on it, because, I... like. But I also don't understand why they're not they're doing Mickey James theme for both of them. <laughs> it's a Mickey James theme has the Trish laugh, and it's Mickey James doing like the Trish pose in the video. But, but and what? then it goes back to the Mickey James thing. It doesn't make sense. No, no, it does. It shows that Trish Stratus is more dedicated to the bit than Mickey James really is. That's the psych game. She's basically showing that she can out psych Mickey James. So I respect it. So she goes to the ring. She's jumping around. She's got this present. Now, Mickey James does not have any friends. So I don't know who the fuck's in this box when I'm watching it. I'm sitting here. I'm like, I mean, it's got to be a person, right? Because it was actually Masala when Mickey James did it. What the fuck's in this box? So she's like, come on, Mickey, come on. And you know, they're basically wrong with us. So Mickey James as Trish comes out. It's like, no, I, I, I don't think I really need a gift. Thank you. And fucking Trish opens the box. She's like, take a peek of the box. See? She opens the box. Holy shit. Biggest surprise of the night. Do you know who we are looking at right now? Tell me. It's Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, He's Jack. back. I We've popped been... so fucking hard for Jack coming back. I've been yelling about Jack. We thought he died in the fucking prison cell. You thought he got covered up, but I, he's back. He's here. They I... called back to a fucking bit. They yeah. actually did it. it yeah. crazy. He's all tied up. He's out of jail, though. This is such and... a long bit that Emerald wasn't even a part of it. So Emerald probably went, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Yeah, I I said, who the fuck is that? It was also the quietest this arena has ever been in this episode. When that Everyone was shot. So I don't know if I'll cut this out, but let's just give a history lesson to anybody that hasn't watched the Jack episode of Raw Down. But Emerald, I'll, I'll tell you in less than a minute. So Jack was Trish's boyfriend. Mickey upset that Trish was dating somebody. So Mickey dressed up as Trish and then was like, Jack. I think you sexy. Oh, this was like a two-week thing. So, like, Jack showed up. Yeah. Next week, she gets him backstage. She's like, Jack, you fucking sexy. You know what they say about best friends? They share. And Jack's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Where's Trish? And then she's like, you assaulted me. And Jack's like, no, what do you mean by that? And then Trish, or not Trish, uh, Mickey starts screaming, help, help. So they do an angle where he's like, what are you doing? You're crazy. You got to stop. You got to stop yelling. And then some uh, security guard off screen grabs him up. And goes, come here, pal. I saw the whole thing. He was assaulting her. <laughs> he that that security guard was in it for the himself. He didn't see anything. He just showed up, said, "Yeah, oh. I saw the whole thing, 
I saw a whole thing, Trish. And then Jack got hauled off to jail, and he hasn't been on since. And now he's tied up in the middle of the ring in a fucking present. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm guessing Trish posted his bail and kidnapped him. I, <laughs> but now Trish is dressed up as Mickey. I, I would hope yeah. that he got like tied up in the eyes. So he's like, someone bailed me out. Oh, I hope to see Trish. I love Trish. I miss Trish. And then <laughs> he opens his eyes and he sees Trish as Mickey. And he's like, what is going on here? What is happening? Yeah. So her whole point for this is like, well, if you are Trish Stratus, you're going to care because this is your boyfriend. But if you're not, well, I can just do whatever to Jack, can I? And at one point, she rips off the tape, and Jack's only line this episode is, both of you bitches are crazy. I popped so hard. Yeah, I got that. Correct. <laughs> it was so good. Correct. It's why I love this. It's why I love this whole thing. They're both crazy, and I love it. Maybe one day we'll and, get Jack on the pod, if I can ever find him. I want to see. I want to hear his thoughts. Well, yeah. no, he's not in and prison Mickey, anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know, and he's got his David Duchovny haircut and everything. I mean, you know, he's doing well. And fucking, like, so, you know, Mickey Jane, she sits there. It, it, it kind of comes up like she's like, oh, I get it now. You know, like she's about to come clean and be like, I'm Mickey James, not Trish. And then she just yells, Damn, she charges the arena. Uh, she gets a shit kicked in by Trish's Mickey James, which, again, Jeff's kiss. But, and Trish leaves where Mickey James tries to save Jack. And, you know, she's like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, like hugging everybody and stuff and shit. And Mickey James, which I, I love this because it, it makes sense. Right, with how the storyline went. Mm -hmm. Right? Just go, looks at him and yells, You cheated on me! And kicks him in the back of the head with the chip kick. It was kick. nasty. She killed yeah. Jack. Yeah. She literally killed him. This man's dead. It was a shotgun We can't kick. interview. Yeah. She fucking obliterated the back of this man's skull. There's blood everywhere. It was horrific. But this was... Ty... You know, I don't know if this or the Mass Striker segment was better, but because Kalito and Master Lock were there, this was the best segment of the show. This was I Jack was back. Lotus, yeah, I got I got a little silly when Jack showed up. I mean, they're all there, and this was a highlight of the show. So of course, next we have to hit the lowest point of the show. Yeah. Um, before that, though, I looking back at New Year's Revolution, where me and Martin sat there and went. Mitch, uh, Mickey and Trish had one of the best matches of that show. And then we watched the Mania mm -hmm. show and we go, damn, these girls are great. And then f we've been, what, four weeks removed, three weeks removed? And now yeah. they, they yeah. hit that bong rip. They said, hey, my guy, what if they swapped roles? Hair and everything. Change your gimmicks, my brother. And then the guy is like, dude, that sounds great. Let's bring back Jack. Remember Jack? What is happening? Why are they dressing up as each other? It's not psychological. Why is why did Mickey just turn into Trish? I thought she just loved her. No, no, she's obsessed with her, right? They yeah, changed it because she her. did the lick on the pussy. They licked the pussy yeah. fingers, and then they said, "Actually, that's too far." Now she's just all crazy. She doesn't love her no more. Does yeah. it not even interesting. Well, she in Trish. does. She loves herself. She became her. That's how much she loves her. And now Trish said, "I'm also crazy." No, no, Trish, Trish is put, Trish is sane, but she's playing against her because she knows she could break Mickey. But it's she's playing the crazy chest. one, and now Mickey's like, Trish, you're taking it a little too far, man. Well, that's the point. This that's is point stupid. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. It's Trish, no, James, point. and Mickey Stratish. No, the whole point is... Trish knows Mickey's fucking bluffing. She's not that crazy. This is all malicious. So Trish is pushing it farther than she would to show her, fuck you. You can't keep up with me. I'll beat you at your own game. You and then know next game. week they're going to show up and be like, I'm just, I'm just playing. Nah. 
nah, nah, I think they're going to take it further. And yeah, yeah, if I'm wrong, that's okay. But in this moment, right now, in my current it's now, 2006. I'm it. It's 2006. Hear me out. Jack was the one plotting behind this the whole time. Yeah. Jack gets known. over. He's in the business for himself. The security guard, he's in on it. He's They're tag team champions. Whoa, that yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, I trusted Jack. And now, right. and now let's well, take a fucking snooze because we're backstage. Lead and Edge are here. Edge is like, ah, Triple H. Remember when you tapped out to Cena? I didn't tap out to Cena. At least mine was in a handicap match when I lost. You suck, dude. And Triple H is like, uh, yeah, remember uh, I got stabbed in the back, dude. Cena hates you more than me. And I hate Cena way more than you. So, good luck tonight, champ. And then he, like, uh, presses Edge's nose in and hits him with the fucking, like, you know, I got your nose and leaves. And Edge is just, like, touching his face. He's like, what the fuck? And now uh, we got the, I guess they showed the See No Evil trailer on the episode, but we didn't get to see it. We don't need to know about that until we watch the movie. No spoilers! May 19th. Go watch it in your local theater. May 19th. That's right. We run down the backlash card. We got shitty ass fucking PNGs. Are you serious? This is the worst. They went from no way out, looking like dog shit, and now they're fucking putting a filter over it. How did they was, make it worse? Was Rob Van Dam or John Cena's PNG the worst? It's one <laughs> of the two. John Cena's hair is fading into obscurity, <laughs> and Rob Van Dam is in about 7p and then resurrected through zoom and enhance through a pixar I, I'll grab, I'll i'm, grab I'm gonna PNGs say john cena because i'm sure that's just how rob van dam sees himself in the mirror when he's high i think the worst is mickey james because the the res of the picture is blurry and then they pngified it and then put a filter over it so you could just see the blurring like it nature of it yeah it's dog shit also yeah uh they decided to put a filter over some of the pictures but not all the pictures so then like some of them just look like they have just crud all over their face or like all over their body and just like scratch marks but not all of them have it because it's not <laughs> done uh consistently so everything just looks completely wrong and they'll be up here take a look yeah uh here's the card for the show we got big show versus kane i, I they sure oh. that sounds fine <laughs> Oh my! Uh, uh, also, the, God, yeah, God looks the, pretty rough, man. Yeah. Oh God, look at Shane. Shane that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I missed Shane. This is oh my. Don't this worry. is the worst one. Don't that worry, doesn't listeners. even look like that doesn't even look like Shane. I'm isolating all of these so you can see them at home. Doesn't it looks uh, like it a fucking grim Batista cosplay? We got uh, McMahon's versus Shawn Michaels and God. That's set up. We got Carlito versus Chris Masters. Oh, that Chris oh, Masters PNG looks like he's been shopping That's in our red bubble and given a spritz. Yeah, he got the oh, spritz on him. Wait till you see Rob Van Dam. Yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, I'll, we'll get the reaction. <laughs> I love it, yeah. So we got Such Rob Van Dam quality. versus Sheldon Benjamin for it's the so <laughs> <laughs> oh. and the Intercontinental Championship. It's, it's the a, old briefcase, too. It didn't even update the briefcase on this PNG. <laughs> Nope. So I, I'm guessing the CLT stuff kind of helped hid some of these, but nowadays it looks like complete dog shit. We got all right. Hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. Just zoom in, editor tie. Zoom in on the RVD. All right, you got it. You got uh -huh. it, editor yeah. tie. Yeah. Me when I shit my pants full of doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Mickey James one. Yeah. So Mickey is defending her women's championship against Trish. Uh, they gave her the gimmick, but they didn't give Trish the gimmick. See what I mean? <laughs> Tanika. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of argument during that segment. I'm going to speak on behalf of all of Raw Down and say regarding Jack, uh, it should have been us. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, it should have been. I would have took that kick to the back of the head. Truly. Uh, that picture looks so poorly edited. It looks like uh, Triple H <laughs> is putting his hand up. It doesn't look right. <laughs> so we got Triple H versus John Cena defending his belt against them and uh, Edge in a triple threat. Edge and Triple yeah. H are both trying to serve Baby Girl in drastically different ways. And I think Edge is Some of these definitely there. look like they just try to do it like real quick. And like they didn't care. Because like some quality is better than the others. Oh my. This cane. Oh my. 
They put the spritz on them. The, at the, you don't have to do this uh, store. You can buy the spritz for five dollars a bottle. Falling. Big Show is falling over. Oh no. <laughs> Okay. Look at his hands. It looks like he's going Kyo Ken around his hands. <laughs> so, before we even go Big into before we even go into the main event, I know this is going long. Danko Jones is here, and he says, "Baby hates me." This is the <laughs> the theme song of Backlash. I'd never heard of Danko Jones in my life, and I I've listened to a lot of butt rock and back, like WWE themes over the years, and a lot of different music. I don't know where Danko Jones comes from. I apologize. Maybe me and Nico will do a little album review. Oh yeah. So. Now I, I, I've I've heard of Dinko Jones before. He's uh he's the shadows of butt dad butt rock. Ah, uh, there we go. Me when I shit my pants full of doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> How is this not the go home show, guys? <laughs> you guys it's realize not? there's another episode before backlash. <laughs> That oh show's going to be God. two hours long. We've been going an hour and a half. The, the pay-per-view is two oh. weeks from the... <laughs> We've gone almost as long as this episode is, and I still have to talk about the main event. Luckily, it's short, but... Five-star run the Patreon. SmackUp Join finally the hit an hour, so we've got to go an hour 40. <laughs> it's good content. <laughs> yeah, look, like we said before at the top of the hour, guys, it's like, this episode... It's I so said it was going to be like, 20 minutes of the segment. I told Dave it's, yesterday. It, it's so dumb, but it's not dumb boring. It's it's just mm-hmm. dumb schlock writing that's like just goofy enough that's got us engaged. They gave us every segment something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, okay, but we spent 10 minutes talking about cum. Yeah, and <laughs> we could have spent 20, to be honest. Speaking of cum and people that really <laughs> want to do it, Edge, Cena, and Triple H are all here. This is the first time we've seen John Cena the entire show. He is the WWE. They did this earlier in the year with Cena. He's the champion. He's just not on the show. Oh, hey. Until either the end or at all. Rey Mysterio didn't even show up to SmackDown last week. So what? <laughs> he's the champ. Who? Rey Mysterio the and champion. And John who? Cena what? barely shows up. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> Edge and Triple H come out. They have their thing. John Cena comes out to mostly booze. After the entrances, we have about six minutes left for this match. So get excited, everybody. Edge and Cena are talking, and Triple H attacks John Cena from behind before the bell, so he gets the early advantage. Somebody's holding up a sign that says Undertaker equals boredom. I didn't know the entire You Don't Have to Do This network went back to 06 and held this sign up, but we have channeled through this man. Mashallah, my brother. Thank you for your contributions. <laughs> this is the best sign of the night. It, not a good night for signs. But Cena uh, takes we're back in a place over. They can't fucking read, so. Yeah. <laughs> Cena takes back over, gets a two count, then we're into a rest hold 45 seconds into this match. John Cena goes to hit the five moves of Doom. Triple H counters with a shoulder check of his own, beats up Cena on the ground, hits a vertical suplex, and Edge is like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I like seeing John Cena die. Triple H notably also hits the crotch shop, much yep. like Shawn Michaels did earlier. <gasps> That's crazy. He hits the knee drop for a 2.5 count, and John Cena hits the 2K comeback as the crowd starts booing. But Triple H counters the you can't see me into a spine buster. John Cena crawls over the corner, and Edge thinks about it for a second, tags himself in, and then clotheslines his partner, John Cena, over the ropes. John uh, Edge and Triple H debate kissing. They think about it. But then they start fighting. Triple H has been on top for most of this handicap match. What a fucking mark. He's really got to put himself over, brother. And we get into the finishing segment of the match where Edge hits a spinning heel kick on Triple H. John Cena has recovered, runs in. He no- John Cena knocks over Edge. Triple H... Puts John Cena in the pedigree position. John Cena reverses to hold Triple H up in the fireman's care for the FU. Triple H escapes, and he shoves John Cena into the ref and Edge, who both die. Triple H looks smugly at the crowd, and he gets an idea. And he goes under the ring, and he grabs his long, hard, woody shaft from (laughs) under the ring. He stares at that bad boy, too. He looks at that. He pulls it out. He pogs over it. He's looking at this like a holy object. His 
big giant shaft that he just wants to deliver into at least one of these boys. He crawls into the ring, wonders which of these young, virile men want to meet the end of his long shaft, and he decides John Cena will be the first one to endure it. He hits John Cena with his big wood, and John Cena hits the ground, unable to handle the sheer power of Triple H's big, throbbing shaft. And as Triple H goes to examine his handiwork again, Edge recovers, spears Triple H. One, two, three. I... Now everybody in these handicap matches the last three weeks have pinned each other. Well done, everybody. They this did. match was fine. It was six minutes long. I uh, Did like anyone else feel that like bit of like anxiety in your heart when Triple H actually got pinned in less than five minutes? No. Well, you haven't kind seen too many Triple H matches because Triple H loves to go longer than anybody else. And I'm yeah. just surprised that he died so hard like that. Like one spear, he's dead. Well, but he also got all the offense in this match, basically. I know. These That's spears. what I'm saying. Like he he was like dominating, gets speared once, and he's dead. I'm oh, like, holy shit, yeah. like Triple H. So what? Uh, you, you, you thinking he's winning or something? No, but I'm just saying like Triple H losing like that, like – I'm surprised he didn't kick out just to prove that he is the gamer. Yeah. But, well, I think but, they all need to take the pinfall to show that any that they're all even. But what the fuck? Are we getting another handicap match next week? You know it. Who knows? Also, what are you is, serious? Why did, also, how do they? Why do they have to act like these guys are all even? John Cena's beaten both of these guys clean when he's had the chance. Uh huh. Because otherwise, nobody would care. It's just like, oh, John Cena's going to win again. They got to make I, it seem like he has a chance to lose. Yeah, but I don't care already because I've seen John Cena beat both of these guys clean in Edge Case multiple times. Well, that's because John yeah. Cena's the best wrestler here. Easily. That's true. Mm -hmm. I am looking at the backlash card. They've only had one more match, and it's not that important to the stories. So this could have just been the go home show. And I don't. Ah. They did the same shit with SmackDown a couple like weeks ago, and it's like, guys, you gotta just do this as the go home. I'm excited to watch the pay per view. You built it up. <laughs> don't give me another week to simmer down, because then I'm gonna be mad about it. <laughs> mm, this is true. But what are you gonna do? Yeah. So next week, I assume. Uh. We're just going to get a bunch of the same shit. Nothing's going to happen. Because they, they basically blew off the fucking... Uh, it's basically the blow-off show before uh, I don't, Backlash. I don't know what they can do at this point to like make any of the matches more exciting to watch. Because it feels like they like strung it together perfectly. And said, so this right here is the match card. Here's every storyline. And we'll, we'll see you at the pay-per-view. Uh, Two weeks from now, baby. We got another I, show. <laughs> yeah. Just confrontations. They could say a little things. You know, I mean, it is across the nation. So. You get we'll the see. drugs. The drugs. The drugs. Overall, I think this was a fine addition. I mean, there was some fucking stupid ass decisions. It's technically kind of dog shit. But you know what? It was enjoyable. It was an easy watch. Yeah. I can't talk too badly about it. Was it was one of the easiest episodes to watch. It was one of the worst episodes we watched. Content-wise, talking about it, one of the best episodes. Because this yeah, was like awesome. it was, this, yeah, it was schlock, but it was fun. Um, yeah. You don't have to do this merch. We got the cum spray. We got the shirts. We got the, right. if you guys want it, you don't have to do this logo stretched out on a shower curtain. Uh, do so. If you want the cum spray, $5 a bottle. And uh, I think we got Raw down. Yeah. Oh, don't forget Rod the down. Patreon. You said that's up now. Yeah, it'll be up. Yeah. It'll be uh, up. Uh, and hey, 5000 you know what happens. Raw down. One night in Raw down, adult video All experience. Right, hey. <laughs> 